The Center for Innovative Drug Development and Therapeutic Trials for Africa was established as an Africa Center of Excellence for Education and Research by the government of Ethiopia with financing from the World Bank to address the root causes of poor access to medicines. CDT Africa is based at the College of Health Sciences at Addis Ababa University. CDT Africa is one of the 24 competitively selected World Bank supported higher education centers of excellence in Eastern and Southern Africa. CDT Africa aims to contribute to Ethiopia and Africa's development through discovery and development of drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics. Africa uh, has a major uh, development challenge related to access to medicines. 80 or 85 percent of countries within Africa do not have the basic uh, capacity to make drugs or vaccines or diagnostics. In fact, vaccine is a major uh, development challenge, as we know, and very few countries have the basic infrastructure for that. CDT Africa offers high-quality education at master's and PhD levels to build a critical mass of scientists and technical experts for therapeutic discoveries. The center has expanded over the last five years and upgraded infrastructure to support training and research in drug discovery and clinical trials. Our interest and focus is to explore, exploit the natural resources within Africa. Africa has 25% of the region's biodiversity or the world's biodiversity and this is a huge potential. A country like Ethiopia also has a, a unique topography that gives the plant some unique characteristics. So our first interest and primary interest is to use the resources within Africa to develop products that potentially could be solutions to global problems, not just uh, African problems. CDT Africa has different partners and collaborators with whom they work for mutually beneficial outcomes. There is also a staff exchange program we do have. Okay, some staff go there and they also come and teach our students and collaborate with research work as well. And they are ready to host our PhD students. In fact, some of our postdocs as well have got access you know, just to go there and get trained more. We also support clinical development activities through our clinical trial training programs and clinical trial research programs. We also support national uh, regulatory capacity. Uh, specifically, we work with the Ethiopian Food and Drug Administration, for example. In fact, we have trained some of their staff uh, in our master's program. So that's a very essential part of it. We also work with the Ministry of Health. In the region, there is a critical need to develop new medical products, especially for diseases that are not addressed by the global biomedical research. Hence, the center has expanded and renovated the capacity of the Phase I Clinical Trials Unit. We know Phase I clinical trials are the most difficult uh, clinical trial types to do. But we intentionally did that because Africa needs to develop that expertise and capacity if it wants to develop its own products. If, you, if a country has its own products, they, that country cannot ship those products to be tested somewhere. Traditional medicine is a widely established, accessible, and affordable healthcare system in the region. The center plans to tap into this indigenous knowledge. It's a very important challenge for Africa. We don't have the vaccines. Um, so the knowledge we want to produce is also knowledge that allows us to respond to pandemics, epidemics and pandemics, uh, non-communicable diseases, neglected tropical diseases. That are major problems um, that may require exploration of endogenous knowledge, but also there is established knowledge around developing treatments for those conditions. So we also work on, on those things. CDT Africa has a postdoctoral training program to equip new PhD graduates with skills and experience to be more valuable. Dr. Fozia Ali Adim is one of the postdoctoral fellows at the center 
and is working on developing a new treatment for scabies from medicinal plants. I'm working uh, on uh, developing new uh, drug for the treatment of scabies uh, from traditionally used medicinal plant. Uh, so uh, I am working since August 2020. So I am uh, progressing in a good way. Examples like uh, Rumex, Species, Acalipas, just uh, selected based on uh, the traditional use for the treatment of scabies. The ACE program aims to promote regional integration and a number of students must be regional. Anna Tesfahuni from Eritrea has concluded her Master of Science in Clinical Trials with the financial support of CDT Africa. The whole experience, well, it's been great. Uh, starting from um, meeting with different people from different countries of the continent to um, the program itself, the program how they, uh, not alone did they deliver the theory part in an excellent way, but we were lucky enough to uh, have learned it with, from the very different experienced doctors and professors who had different experiences in uh, clinical trials, who worked as project uh, managers, uh, principal investigators, statisticians, monitors, and regulatory uh, body. So what I really found rewarding about this program is that they gave us like, um, they devoted some time to speaking about the experience they had on ground. So they gave us some picture of what it's like to work uh, what it's like to work in clinical trials and handling clinical trials on the ground and this actually really gave me and my classmates like some confidence in the profession that we're going to be working on. Anna's research assessed the feasibility of HPV self-sampling as a form of cervical cancer screening in low and middle income countries. There are different barriers to doing uh, cervical screening in low and middle income countries like uh, the cultural barriers, the females now wanting to be checked by male doctors, and there's other physical access. Maybe some uh, ladies are uh, living in far uh, away villages, uh, hard to reach communities. Innovative way to actually overcome the um, burdens of screening, like not doing the, the barriers to screening. So this was to assess that. And it was pos the, the, the result was positive because the uptake was actually higher with those using self-sampling, so it was a good. CDT Africa hosts a regional bio-incubation hub, which is an innovative cafe that hosts innovators and gives them the space and support to develop their ideas. Dr. Yemtu Bizanash is an associate professor at the School of Medicine and the team lead of the CDT bio-incubation hub for anyone that is, uh, you know, innovation in, um, you know, drug risk gathering so, so that they can use the facility. So we are open to that. So it's something that uh, we want to have a state-of-art uh, laboratory where people can really um, build their capacity in, in Africa, in Ethiopia. So we want, you know, um, instead of uh, buying uh, always drugs from, you know, developed countries, Africa is way behind, you know, many things, so especially now COVID has shown us a lot that we need that capacity, so we are working hard towards that, that's uh, our plan for the integration. Iasu Makonan is a professor of pharmacology at the College of Health Sciences and the deputy center leader at CDT Africa. He says the College of Health Sciences offered CDT Africa the space to set up a laboratory. CDT Africa started with very small space. In fact, they were just using my office. And then we had to look for space. We had to ask the College of Health Sciences just to give us some space. And luckily enough, the college has really contributed a lot. And then uh, we got this space. Then we had to go all the way, you know, just to establish this, this lab. 
this every sort of equipment which you see here, they are freshly introduced. There's nothing here. And then we have to purchase a number of equipment. And most of the equipments were coming from abroad. And of course, you know, purchase process in this country is very, very awful. But we managed anyway. And currently, in fact, we have tried to equip with relevant equipment. And I personally believe that this facility could, could help students, including our postdocs, do their laboratory work. The center's goal is to have well-equipped, state-of-the-art laboratories. We'd we'll be well familiarized. You know? our, our main objective is to make sure that all students don't need to go abroad in order to do their analysis, to do their laboratory work. Instead, you know, they can do everything just within this lab, and that's what our we are ambition. With the World Bank funding coming to a close by end of 2023, the management and staff of the center are now working on sustainability. But that's only the beginning of it. What will make us sustainable is really if we have the right facilities, which we are working on now, we have the infrastructure is, is being built. If we continue to get the national support, even at the highest level. So if we manage to get that, and if we manage to be more regional in the sense that um, we work with the African Union, with, we work with intergovernmental international organizations, then meaningful sustainability comes. Professor McConan is certain that the center's future is assured. It's trying, you know, just to generate funds uh, through research collaboration with different uh, institutes and universities. And I'm 100% sure that CDT will stand on its own, even if the fund from uh, the World Bank is stopped. And, and uh, I don't have any worry you know, as far as this is concerned, you know. It will stand on its own. And first, in fact, our ambition is not to stop it here, but in the future, even to develop further, you know, to expand it further. You know. That's our mission. Within five years, CDT Africa has trained scientists and technical experts for drug discovery in the region and built research capacity that supports discovery of health interventions. It is recognized as a major training and research center for drug discovery in the region. The center is now looking to the future and is widening its network of international partnerships as it establishes stable funding mechanisms.